guys, let's go ahead. Today we're going to be talking about hemoglobin versus myoglobin. Yes, another biochemistry video. So I hope you guys enjoy. So first we're going to start talking about hemoglobin. So this can be represented with HB. So this is a tetrameric heme protein. So it transports oxygen from lungs to peripheral tissues and returns the carbon dioxide to lungs for exhalation. So the prefixes for this are deoxyhemoglobin, which does not contain oxygen, and oxyhemoglobin, which has oxygen. So deoxy means no oxygen, oxy means has oxygen. And this is the same for myoglobin as well, but we'll touch a little bit on that after. Hemoglobin has four polypeptide chains. Each of them bind to a heme group. So there are four heme groups. So for every one polypeptide chain, there's a heme group that goes with it. And these heme groups are called prosthetic groups. And if you guys don't know what prosthetic groups are, they're the non-amino acid component of a structure. They are very tightly bound cofactors. And if you guys know anything about cofactors, they assist in certain processes. So in this case, heme is the prosthetic group which contains the binding site for oxygen. So in hemoglobin and myoglobin, heme is the prosthetic group. So it assists with being able to get that oxygen. So heme essentially allows myoglobin and hemoglobin to bind to oxygen. And we also talk about binding, we can talk about carbon monoxide. So the binding affinity of heme to carbon monoxide is 250 times higher than oxygen. So this means that heme will easily and quickly take any carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but is more difficult to bind to oxygen. Which is why when we're in an atmosphere of a lot of carbon monoxide, this can cause a person to suffocate or cause them to have lots of headaches and other symptoms like nausea as heme chooses to take the carbon monoxide over the oxygen when it's available due to its higher affinity to bind. So now as we know, heme is the prosthetic group. So without any prosthetic group bound for both hemoglobin and myoglobin, we can call these apoproteins. And with a prosthetic group bound, we can call those holoproteins. This goes for both hemoglobin and myoglobin as we've stated. But one key difference that I would like to highlight between hemoglobin and myoglobin is the cooperative binding feature. So in hemoglobin, there is cooperative binding, which essentially means that one once one oxygen binds, it becomes very easy for three more oxygens to bind. And this feature is only exclusive to hemoglobin. So in total, we know that hemoglobin binds four oxygens because of the four polypeptide chains containing each one heme group. So each chain contains a heme group and then each heme group binds one oxygen. So whenever we breathe in oxygen, myoglobin takes it in first as it's faster, but then hemoglobin binds one, which makes it super easy to bind three more oxygen molecules. So in this graph representing oxygen binding, myoglobin is the dotted line and it has a hyperbolic curve, whereas the hemoglobin is shown as sigmoid. So essentially this graph shows that myoglobin binds oxygen first, it will bind before hemoglobin. And hemoglobin takes more time to bind that first oxygen and after it binds the first oxygen, it is easy to bind the other three oxygens, making that more of a sigmoid curve as opposed to the myoglobin being a hyperbola. So if we look at this graph and look at it backwards, so read it from right to left, we can see that hemoglobin is first to give away its oxygen. And then if hemoglobin has no more oxygen, myoglobin will release its oxygen, which is why myoglobin is more commonly found in muscles and tissues because it acts as an oxygen storage, especially in intense exercise, which we'll get into a little bit later. But first, I would like to mention one more thing about hemoglobin, just the two different states of the hemoglobin. So there are two different conformations found with hemoglobin. There is a T state and the R state. So the T state or the TEN state is more stable than the R state. And the T state is when there's an absence of oxygen. So no oxygen has bound to the hemoglobin yet. So the main confirmation for this is deoxyhemoglobin, hence deoxy meaning no oxygen. And because there's no oxygen binded to this heme, it keeps the molecule nice and tense, which is hence the T state. But in the R state or the relaxed state, the hemoglobin becomes more relaxed once an oxygen binds, making it easier to bind the rest of the oxygens. So the other three with that cooperative binding feature, because as we know from cooperative binding, you know, we take one and then the rest of them come. So we have like a card of four, just think, and then like once one heme binds to an oxygen in hemoglobin, then three more will bind. So essentially the oxygen binds to hemoglobin in the T state, which triggers a conformational change to the R state, which is the relaxed state. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about myoglobin, which can be abbreviated to MB. So myoglobin is a monomeric heme protein that binds and releases oxygen in the tissues. This can also happen in the muscles, so whether they're the muscles or tissues, it acts as this oxygen storage. So it only releases oxygen when hemoglobin has used all of its oxygen up. So for example, when you go for a run, you need more oxygen. So in intense exercise, myoglobin plays a crucial role to ensure you don't pass out, hence having enough oxygen to push you through something intense such as running or any other strenuous exercise. So myoglobin is a single polypeptide chain that folds with a prosthetic group so 
prosthetic group being the heme and opposed to hemoglobin with the four polypeptide chains with four different hemes the myoglobin has one poly polypeptide chain so it only binds to one oxygen so there's no cooperative binding or whatever so same idea with hemoglobin there's deoxy and oxy so deoxymyoglobin is no oxygen and oxymyoglobin has oxygen so deoxy no oxygen oxy has oxygen so in summary just think about hemoglobin with four spots for oxygen whereas myoglobin only has one spot to bind oxygen so myoglobin is kind of that one and done it's the first to fill up before hemoglobin so as we talk about how myoglobin is the first to fill the o2 storages before hemoglobin we can also say that hemoglobin is the first to give the oxygen because myoglobin is that storage remember so it wants to hold on to that oxygen as long as possible and only in certain cases like strenuous exercise will the oxygen from the myoglobin be released from those tissues and muscles so only hemoglobin has the unique cooperative binding feature of one oxygen binding then making it super easy for the other three spots to be filled with oxygen whereas the myoglobin does not have this feature so think of just like getting drinks you know how they give you a carton of four if you buy like a lot of drinks whereas if you only buy one drink they're not going to give you this whole carton usually that's kind of the same thing so for hemoglobin there's like the four slots to put o2 in each of them so there's heme in each of them and then o2 whereas the myoglobin basically just gives you that one oxygen so you just have that one drink basically that's kind of how i like to think about it but anyways i hope that made sense and i hope you guys enjoyed this biochemistry video again um expect my keyboard and mouse sounds asmr is in the future as well though i definitely want to create a range of different genres of minecraft videos and kind of incorporate and see what i really enjoy but I definitely, for this time being, have been enjoying making these biochemistry videos and I hope you guys have been enjoying watching them. So yeah, anyways, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy.